Hey everybody, let's take a look at what we do with trig functions now. Uh, the other tools for right triangles beyond the Pythagorean theorem are all these trigonome trigonometric functions, which are sine, cosine, and tangent, right? Where we usually abbreviate them as S-I-N, C-O-S, and T-A-N. Uh, these are all ratios of side lengths uh, based on a particular angle that comes into it. And so if I've got this picture down below, I've got this little, uh, uh, you know, person that's walking here, again, starting off at, at this location down kind of in the lower left-hand side, and they walk over 20 meters and then up some amount of meters in order to get to a location, then I'm asking, like, how far do, do they walk in these, these two pieces? So all I have now is the 20 meters. I'm lacking the other two sides of the triangle. But I have a new piece of information and that new piece of information is right here, and it is the angle between the hypotenuse and this kind of adjacent side length, if we're thinking about it. Turns out that's enough information to solve for either C or B, and it doesn't matter which one. Let's say, for instance, that we want to solve uh, kind of for C. If we want to solve this for C, then we need to look at this and say, okay, here's my angle. Uh, this blue side is my adjacent, which we usually abbreviate as my adjacent, ADJ. So my adjacent side length is the blue one because this is where my angle, and the long side is always my hypotenuse, HYP. That means that this uh, red side that's left over is my opposite, and I've got these pieces. Now, if I wanted to solve for the hypotenuse and I know the adjacent, which one of these three trigonometric functions would I need? Well, one thing that I talked about in class was this great mnemonic, which is so, ka, toa. You'll notice that both so and ka have a hypotenuse and toa does not, which means that we need to choose from either so or ka in order to figure this out. And because we've got the adjacent side length that we know, then we're gonna go ahead and choose cosine as the tool uh, of our work. So what that means is that I can say that the cosine of my angle is equal to my hypotenuse excuse me, my adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Adjacent comes in the middle, so adjacent divided by hypotenuse. That's the way this whole thing puts together. This is the cosine of whatever that angle is, and that's 30 degrees, is equal to my adjacent over my, my, my hypotenuse. And this is great. So I can go ahead and solve for what I want. And if what I'm solving for is my hypotenuse, then I need to get my hypotenuse by itself. So I need to move that over to this side uh, here, and I need to move the cosine uh, over to the other side. And I can do that with a couple divisions. So I can divide by hypotenuse, excuse me, a multiplication and a division. So I need to multiply by hypotenuse and divide by cosine. And what I walk away with when I rearrange this algebraically is I say the hypotenuse is equal to the adjacent divided by the cosine of whatever angle I've got. And this is cool. So I've got a, a rearranged function where I can solve for hypotenuse. And all I need to do is take the adjacent side length and divide by the cosine of theta. I'm going to go ahead and say equals here and put in my pieces. So my adjacent is just 20 meters. And my cosine of my angle is the cosine of theta. Now theta in this case is known in the problem. So we can put that in as 30 degrees. So I've got 20 meters divided by the cosine of 30. And on a calculator, this is pretty easy to do as long as your calculator can handle sine, cosine, and tangent. I got to make sure that I'm in degrees first, and I am on my calculator, which is great. So now I can just take 20, and I can divide it by the cosine of 30. So again, that's... 20 divided by the cosine of 30. And what I walk away with, I'll see if I can get this to uh, focus on it. The, uh, hello. Oh, there it is. So again, the 20 divided by the cosine of 30. And I walk away with this number that's 23.09. So I'm going to round that up. And I'm going to go ahead and say that this number in the end is nothing more 
than 23, then my units are going to be in meters. Um, when you take the cosine of a number, uh, you lose the, the degrees on it. It just becomes the number because it's a ratio. And then you can take the meters that's left. And so we walk away with meters. So it means that my adjacent here is 20. And at a 30 degree, my hypotenuse is 23. And so that's my final answer. And we are set and ready with the problem. All right. Hopefully that was helpful to figure out the side length using sine, cosine, and tangent. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.